Magic has been on the struggle bus a bit. Most of us out there have been hot or cold on various releases. But with the recent announcements, coupled with things that have happened over the course of the last year, signal that Wizards of the Coast is looking to usher us into a brand new era for Magic the Gathering. Want to know how? Well, I'm going to tell you. Not too long ago, Magic the Gathering sets were dropping and, well, frankly, pre-releases were dead. The products weren't selling, uh, even on the secondary market, nor were they selling from the local game store. Nobody could find anything worth spending their money on, and frankly, we were in a bad spot. But with the announcement of the Play Booster Box, it does seem that Wizards of the Coast have taken notice, and they are trying to bring us back together. And whether you agree or disagree with all the decisions they are making, it's very clear they are looking to usher us into the new era of Magic the Gathering. And it's more than just the play booster. So today we're going to talk about the ways that over the past year to year and a half, they have been trying to nudge us in what I think is the right direction, what all of these signs are, what they mean, and yes, what that's going to mean for the future Magic the Gathering sets coming out in 2024. So join me today on this journey. And if you haven't yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button because we are racing, rocketing to 6750. And after that, we're on to 7K, baby. Let's go. But this new era of Magic the Gathering is something that I believe we're going to look at quite fondly. We are coming off some of Magic the Gathering's darker times with sets like Adventures in the Forgotten Realms and all of the Midnight Hunt products. We knew that Magic had taken a turn and we really weren't here for it. Heck, even when we got a new product that we like, like Kamigawa, it was printed so hard and into oblivion that we got to reap zero rewards or feel special for anything we got out of the box, nor did we have the opportunity to go back to continue playing it as the rapid release cycle was upon us. But Mark Rosewater and Wizards of the Coast gave themselves a bit of leeway and gave us a massive announcement when they announced the Play Booster Box. And it is the latest decision in a line of decisions that tell me they are trying to nudge Magic the Gathering in a correct direction. Now with the Play Booster Box, it was stated by Wizards of the Coast and Mark Rosewater that a major reason for making this change was to save limited play. That's right, this was not focused on the value of the product or selling boxes in a frontward facing announcement it was focused on the limited play experience now behind the scenes let's acknowledge let's just say it which of the coast is a company they want to make money but the times of everyone getting stimulus checks and having no other bills and being able to spend all of our money on cool luxury cardboard rectangles shout out you know who you are it does seem that we've had to make a change because the old system wasn't working and the consolidation of the booster box tells me that they do value that nostalgic pull and that gathering i have said several times and i believe one of the changes that had to be made and now look it is being made is the fact that we didn't really experience the same product it was outlined in that announcement that often players or anyone who engages with Magic the Gathering in any of their own way found themselves in kind of a unique subset of individuals. Whether you were a drafter and you only played limited and you got the draft booster box, which apparently, you know, there was few and far between of. And heck, I track every single sold listing of sealed product on TCG Player and that product did not sell the best, I will admit that. But then, if you weren't one of the drafters, you were either a set booster box or a collector booster box person. If you were a collector booster box, hey, you liked blingy, shiny things, but with the aforementioned Kamigawa and other sets like Dominaria Re Remastered, Dominaria United, and Streets of New Capenna, you weren't really rewarded for purchasing the collector booster box anyway. And the set booster box, let's face it, it sold like hotcakes with almost every set where it was available. It gave you tons of cards, but... It didn't really have a place outside of just being a commander product with every release. There wasn't really much to do with the card. So consolidating us, getting away from the crazy hype that was happening during the 2020-2021 time, I think is a massively positive decision. Now, again, later on this channel, we will discuss the price throughout this week and the increase in price overall for the cost of a box while the packs will remain the same. Kind of the, some of the logistics there. Again, make sure your sub will get into that. But the idea that we are all going to experience the same product with each release is going to you have the advantage of whether we like a release or not, it's going to be based solely on the release, not necessarily what product we bought 
during that release, if that makes any sense to you guys. It, it makes sense in my head. But furthermore, it's been more than just the play booster box that Wizards of the Coast have committed to, to changing Magic the Gathering. I just mentioned in that last little section soliloquy explanation of the play booster changing our landscape, the fact that these sets, the set booster boxes and standard sets as a whole, have often felt like they didn't have a home. In fact, without standard being a viable format, it does seem that we really didn't have anywhere outside of Commander to put these cards. And listen, Commander's a massive group of human beings, and I love the fact that Commander, the Commander community is driving a lot of our products, and hey, if it's the biggest community, it's the most people playing the game, I support them getting tokens, them getting things to use all the time. But Magic has to go wider than Commander, and it does seem that Wizards of the Coast is willing to commit to that. They made the change with the standard format and announced, hey, we really want to strive to give standard a place not only in the local game store but in the hearts and hands of everyone who loves our game and while this is yet to be seen if this will work i have done a video and i'll try to link it here about what i think they need to do to really make that happen ramp that thing up to 11 but it does show like hey they're acknowledging more of this stuff has to change and it wasn't just standard with that announcement they changed the band cycle for every single constructed format that's right pioneer bands modern bands standard bands the cycle for those bands the usefulness of your cards and the health of the format was all rolled in to one system with the recent ban announcement i know i know that it's caused some rumbles in the community about why is scam not banned and modern and karn is still a pioneer target there are things that could be reworked there but it shows some acknowledgement that we have to focus on fixing things and acknowledgement has always been where it started with wizards of the coast and it always is where it starts with our favorite game they do not move fast. Wizards of the Coast, massive company, right? They produce tons of product and often we accuse them of overproducing and hey, I agree with that. But as they move and make these small changes, we're going to have to settle for incremental changes from a massive company trying to nudge us in a proper direction. I'll direct you no further than the recent Amazon sale. We did cover that on the channel as well. And the recent Amazon sale, while there was a couple products that were on pretty big discount, most of the stuff we saw was from an era of Magic the Gathering that we wouldn't consider something that we did not look fondly on. It was products that were, we would argue, overprinted. They didn't really hit with our hearts. We didn't know what products to buy. There was so many of them. And the parade of problems never seemed to stop. But with the printing of the Brothers War, and that's where I mark a lot of the timeline on this channel of things beginning to change, we saw a shift in Wizards of the Coast. I mean, heck, look no further than the cards I am holding in my hand to notice that Wizards of the Coast acknowledged for the longest time that while their game might be fun and Commander is massive, and frankly, they're the most successful trading card game in the history of the universe, it seems, collectability of their modern products was at an all-time low and they nudged in a proper direction and started making some changes now again whether you agree with them or not these were changes to add collectability back to their product solving an issue that was around for a long time and it does look like they continue to go in that direction heck Doctor Who has serialized doctors. Lord of the Rings had a 2.2 or $2 million one of one. Shout out Post Malone. Listen, I know Posty is a sub to the channel, so big shout out to you, Posty. I don't know if that's true, but listen, that just sounded really cool to say into a microphone. But I say all that to say that collectability is an important aspect of the game. Wizards of the Coast not only acknowledges that, but is looking to make some of those changes. So, so far, we've got play being modified to really support things outside of Commander. We have collectability being added back into the products, but that doesn't change the problem that Wizards of the Coast has with massively printing everything into the dirt. We talked about the recent Amazon dumps not being that bad, but before that, you could get collector booster boxes for $90, $80, some draft boxes as low as $50, $60 on Amazon, feeling like it's directly from Wizards of the Coast. And while this is a bad thing. In fact, it's hurting probably one of my favorite sets of the last couple years, looking at you, Streets of New Capenna. It is slowing. We are seeing less of that happening. That doesn't mean we won't see it again. Listen, we are transitioning out of the era, but think back to yourself to 
you know, six, seven, even eight months ago. We were seeing more frequent, more drastic sales and offerings on Amazon, hurting our community, hurting the local game store, and giving us less confidence to go out to the places we love to play Magic and to purchase Magic. Now, when we start to remove that from the community, it does seem that Wizards of the Coast is limiting printing. Things like the serialized cards are saying, hey, I can only print so many collector booster boxes, giving them, if, all, if anything, only the aura of being collectible, even if they're not quite yet, I do see a shift happening where we might not see as many Amazon dumps in the future. Now, again, I just said, and I'll say it again, I don't think they're all over. I think we are. it's going to take us time to get out of this, but you could tell me a story from some of these changes where we are not going to see as drastic of Amazon dumps very often. In fact, I do think they are adverse to dumping commander masters on amazon because of the look it would have for a collect or a master set to be on an amazon dump but these are all signs in my opinion of a changing magic the gathering ecosystem they're showing restraint when it comes to printing products doctor who extremely coveted modern collector boxes have a pseudo or seemingly limited print run uh products are selling out there were times where lord of the rings set booster box lord of the rings collector booster boxes were sold out at various retailers and that to me is the sign of a healthy ecosystem now some of those products because our community is so big have to come back in stock have to be resold but we can see it done differently in this future and have frankly than we did during the again the kamigawa neon dynasty era but I do think that this is a pivotal moment in Magic the Gathering history. And heck, maybe if you're watching this in two years or whatever it is on YouTube, maybe I'm still here, maybe I'm not. But you got to tell me that this, or you got to know that this has been a big moment for us. I do think they're trying to nudge us in the right direction. Now, with them nudging us in the right direction comes a lot of change and a lot of opportunity for Wizards of the Coast to still well wizards of the coast this up we could still see this play booster box which by the way i'm gonna make my biggest contribution to wizards of the coast right here drop the play just call it the booster pack have the booster pack and the collector booster pack and look you did it i have no idea why we went with play booster pack play booster when it could have just been booster pack but I guess that's a story for another day. But we could still see them massively overprint this thing. We could still see sets that are not popular products, which has happened throughout Magic the Gathering history, where the set sits on shelves, doesn't sell well, and frankly doesn't hold any real value. Now they're trying to combat this. They're making positive changes to the list with only 40 to 30 cards from the list with special guests being popular reprints to support Commander, while also trying to juice those formats for Standard, and thus if you juice them for Standard, Pioneer, and maybe even modern down the line, etc., etc. The point here is that it really does feel like change, the, the winds of change are upon us. It feels like the Magic the Gathering world that we know and love is different. If you would have sat me down a year and a half ago, two years ago, and been like, hey, Wizards is going to make a big push to try to bring back standard, add collectability to their products, and seemingly lower the number of boxes that they're printing with every release, I would have called you a liar. I would have been like, there's no way that they are getting it. And yes, it's taken them a lot of time, but I think this is happening. And listen, I know I catch a lot of flack for trying to read between the lines here, look into what's going on in our community and see, is it a positive or negative in my take on things? And I know I tend to shade positive. I don't wake up every morning and just want to hate everything. I think it's more fun and more interesting to actually talk about what could go well. But you guys know, if it goes poorly, I will be there to call it out. There's nothing on this channel that I say out loud into a microphone that I don't personally believe. I am the same person that called uh, Magic 30th the most predatory product I've ever seen. I called the Commander Master set booster box a bastardization of the most popular product in Magic the Gathering. I will call call it like it is, but here I see a lot of positive happening. And I know from my comment section on videos recently that a lot of you agree with me. I also know some of you don't. So with all these signs in mind, with everything we just talked about, what do you think? Do you think this is a signal of a change in the winds of Magic the Gathering? Are we entering a different era or is Wizards of the Coast just going to make this feel like more the same? There's going to be no collectability. These mean absolutely nothing. And you don't really think you see any positive change in Magic's near future. I, I respect every opinion. And even if you disagree with me, I want to hear from you. But most importantly, something we haven't done in a while. I haven't seen anyone share one of these videos in a bit. So I got to ask somebody out there, if you're a channel member, if you're a subscriber anywhere that 
you know, you engage with Magic the Gathering conversation, just go ahead and share one of these videos. Share something that you think is interesting, an interesting conversation to have, because not only do I love growing our community, I, I make no bones about it, I'm on YouTube, I love growing the community, I love when people hit the subscribe button, I am addicted to this channel, but I also love the different ideas that come in from outside when we share these videos, we get new voices in our community. So thank you so much for hanging out again. Ooh, as I smack the microphone, racing to 7k we're almost to 6750 hit that sub button share this video thank you so much for hanging out today i want to hear from each and every one of you and until next time you guys know me my name is josh and i gotta stop holding on to these things they just they make me very happy so i just like them in my hand what can i say oh all right we'll see you around bye